Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm your gracious host, Timbo Slice, the most reliable source for all things science. Today we're going to take a look at a truly electrifying topic, conducting polymers. Let's start by defining the word polymer. A polymer is a large compound composed of many repeated subunits known as monomers. Polymers are very useful and make up common materials like rubber and plastic. Many polymers, such as rubber, are cheap, flexible, and easy to process. But most prominently, the vast majority of polymers are insulators. But for some applications like consumer electronics and sensors, you may want a polymer to conduct electricity. So what if you can make a material that was flexible and easy to process, but also conducted electricity? I give you polyaniline. Polyaniline is called a conducting polymer because, well, it's a polymer that conducts. Heger, McDermott, and Shirakawa got their Nobel Prize for their work with conducting polymers in 2000. They discovered that polyacetylene can conduct electricity because of its pi conjugation and rigid backbone. After a decade of research, polyaniline is now considered one of the most promising and versatile conducting polymers. Furthermore, when polyaniline is formed into tiny strings or nanofibers, it's possible to maximize the ratio of surface area to volume, improving the material's performance and electrical chemical interactions. Want to see it in action? Well, fortunately for us, there are two very easy methods for making polyaniline nanofibers, called interfacial polymerization and rapid mixing. Are you the kind of person who likes to sit back and watch things polymerize? Yeah! Oh, great, because I know I am. Let's try the interfacial method. First, make a 0.32 molar solution of aniline and chloroform, and a 0.08 molar solution of ammonium persulfate in hydrochloric acid. Pour the aniline solution into the acid to a 1-1 ratio, and you will see that the two are immiscible, like oil and water. After waiting a couple minutes, aniline slowly begins to react with the acid at the interface of the two liquids, causing the monomer to polymerize and disperse into the acid solution. If you're watching your weight and looking to burn a few extra calories, try rapid mixing. Using the same concentrations as before, dilute aniline monomer in distilled water, not chloroform. But just pour this mixture into the same acidic ammonium persulfate used in the previous method, and then start shaking it like a Polaroid picture. By shaking it, the aniline monomer quickly and completely reacts with the dopant, allowing it to form nanofibers instead of worthless clumps. On both samples, use dialysis to purify the nanofibers, and voila, we've made a conductive polymer out of nothing more than common lab ingredients and a monomer solution. Don't believe me? How about if polyaniline nanofibers could be used as a supercapacitor? Check this out. In Northwestern University's battery lab, polyaniline was deposited on two metal substrates, separated by a porous membrane soaked in sulfuric acid, and pressed into a conventional coin cell. By connecting the capacitor to a 200 to 600 microamp power source and measuring the voltage drop across the coin cell, we can see a clear charge-discharge behavior indicative of a capacitor. Well, it looks like that's all we have for you today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this segment and learned a thing or two.